We've seen some examples of vector fields arising in physics. Now there's also a basic mathematical way that vector fields arise. Namely, if f is a real valued function, on R2 or R3. Actually, what I'm about to say makes sense in any number of dimensions. Then the gradient of F is a vector field. So on R2, the gradient of F is the vector field whose components are the functions Fx and Fy. And on R3, the gradient of f is fx comma fy comma fc. So if you have any function, you can take its gradient to get a vector field. Now we could try to run this process backwards, and that leads to the following definition. So definition, the vector field f And here I'm putting an arrow over the F to indicate that it's a vector field. I'll try to always remember to do that. It's called conservative if the vector field F is the gradient of little f for some function little f. And the word conservative doesn't have to do with politics. It is related to conservation of energy, for reasons that we'll see a little later. And the function f is sometimes called a potential. In physics, you might actually want to call minus f the potential, but never mind. So some vector fields are conservative and some are not. For example, let's look at the vector field in two dimensions. 3x squared sine y, comma, x cubed cosine y. So is this conservative? Is there a function little f such that fx is 3x squared sine y and fy is x cubed cosine y? Well, maybe you can guess one. Can you see it? Well, yes, so this is conservative. So this vector field f is the gradient of little f, where little f equals x cubed sine y. So here, just by guessing and checking, we find a potential. Now, another example is the vector field f equals x cubed sine y comma y squared. Is this conservative? Can you find a potential for it? Well, if you try, you're going to have a lot of difficulty because it's impossible. So this vector field is actually not conservative. So how do I know that? Well, I'm go going to show you a procedure for either finding a potential, if it exists, or getting a contradiction to see that a potential can't exist. So let's do that on the next page. So we first need a basic fact. So let's do the two-dimensional case. So if f is a differentiable function on R2, then f of xy equals f of 0y plus the integral from 0 to x of fx of t comma y dt. So this is a way of taking a function and if you know what its derivative is, if you know its partial derivative with respect to x, then you can integrate it out to eliminate a variable. 
Um, so I'll show you how to use that in a minute. First, let me explain why this fact is true. So this is because for fixed y, um, define g of t equals f of t comma y. Okay, and then this formula here, this is the fundamental theorem of calculus for the function gt. So you see then dg dt at some point t by the definition of partial derivatives is fx of ty. So now you can integrate fx from t equals 0 to t equals x. And then the fundamental theorem of calculus says that you will get f of xy minus f of 0y. Um, geometrically, what we're doing here is we have some point xy, and we're looking at a line connecting the point xy to the point 0y. And we're integrating the partial derivative with respect to x along this line to relate f of xy to f of 0y. Okay, now here's how we can use this fact. So first let me show you the example that worked. So for example, suppose we know that fx equals 3x squared sine y and fy equals x cubed cosine y and we want to find f. So we did this example on the previous page by guessing and checking, but suppose we weren't so clever and we wanted to do this by some algorithm. Here's how we can do this. Okay, so first I'm going to get rid of the variable x. So I'm going to use this formula to write f of xy is some function g of y plus the integral of fx from 0 to x, which is x cubed sine y. So I can do this. Basically, this is sort of like the reverse of partial differentiation. So we pretend that y is a constant. We integrate with respect to x. So this antiderivative is x cubed sine y. And then there's going to be an integration constant, which is actually depending on y. So this g of y is equal to f of 0 y. Okay, so now I have this equation, and now I want to find f. So now I need to use the other equation, which is that f y equals x cubed cosine y. So I differentiate this equation with respect to y. So I get f y equals g prime of y plus x cubed cosine y. On the other hand, I'm given that fy equals x cubed cosine y. So I have x cubed cosine y equals g prime of y plus x cubed cosine y, and that implies that g prime of y equals 0. And so that means that g of y is a constant, c. And then putting that into the above equation here, I conclude that f of xy equals x cubed sine y plus a constant. Okay, so this is how we can find the potential by first integrating out x and then integrating out y. Now, what if we try this for the example where I said there is no potential? So if we try this, it's not going to work. Let's see how that fails. So let's try to find f with fx equals x cubed sine y and fy equals y squared. Okay, so now we can integrate out x so I integrate this first equation over x and then it, I get that f equals x to the 4 over 4 sine y 
plus some integration constant, which depends on y. I'll call that g of y. OK, now I differentiate with respect to y. And I get that fy equals x to the fourth over 4 cosine y plus g prime of y. On the other hand, I'm given that fy equals y squared. So if I rearrange this a little bit, I get that g prime of y equals y squared minus x to the fourth over 4 cosine y. So now we'd like to integrate this to figure out what g of y is, but this doesn't make any sense because g is a function of y alone, and so g prime is also a function only of y, but on the right hand side this is a function which depends on x, so that doesn't make any sense. So this is a contradiction. because g prime of y depends only on y, not on x. Okay, so that's why this vector field f equals x cubed sine y comma y squared is not conservative. Because if we assume it is conservative, we find that the potential has to have this form, but then we get an absurdity from that. So it's not conservative. One more example is that the gravitational field f equals minus g m r over the length of r cubed is conservative. Now how do I know that? Well, we could find a potential function by following the procedure I just showed you, first integrating out x then integrating out y, then integrating out c. However, we could also be clever and just guess a potential function. So I'll just show you the answer. So f is the gradient of little f, where little f is gm over the length of r. This is actually minus the gravitational potential energy, because the gravitational potential energy increases as you go away from the origin. So let's check that this works. Why does it work? So if I write f in terms of x, y, and c, then f is gm times x squared plus y squared plus c squared to the minus one half. So fx is, well, gm stays the way it is because it's just a constant, times minus one half times x squared plus y squared plus c squared to the minus 3 halves times the derivative of this with respect to x, which is 2x. So I get minus gm times x over x squared plus y squared plus c squared to the 3 halves, which I could write a little more compactly as minus gmx over the length of r cubed. And likewise, fy equals minus gmy over the length of r cubed. Everything here is symmetric under switching x, y, and z. And fc equals minus gmc over the length of r cubed. So the gradient of little f is fx, fy, fc, those are all minus gm over the length of r cubed times something, so it's minus gm over the length of r cubed times the vector x, y, z. And the vector x, y, z, of course, is r, so this is minus gm r over the length of r cubed, which is what we're supposed to get. All right. Now coming up, we will see some nicer ways to decide whether or not vector fields are conservative.